these estimates. But uh, there was a huge mother bear, as we learned, when two cubs uh, popped their heads out of the dumpster. And so we very gently, uh, with with some car headlights and clapping, encouraged them to leave, and the show went on. But uh, it was kind of reminded me, you know, what 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 can possibly go wrong with a live TV broadcast? Is uh, you always have to remember bears and, uh, and, and the impacts of, of, of drought and climate change. So from July 4th, Amy and I write, Evidence supporting the existence of climate change is pummeling the United States this summer. From the mountain wildfires of Colorado to the recent derecho storm that left at least 23 dead and 1.4 million people without power from Illinois to Virginia. The phrase extreme weather flashes across television screens from coast to coast, but its connection to climate change is consistently ignored, if not outright mocked. If our news media, including or especially the meteorologists, continue to ignore the essential link between extreme weather and climate change, then we as a nation, the greatest per capita polluters on the planet, may not act in time to avert even greater catastrophe. More than 2,000 heat records were broken last week. Again, this is from July 4th of this year. More than 2,000 heat records were broken last week around the United States. NOAA reported that the spring of 2012 marked the largest temperature departure from average of any season on record for the contiguous United States. These record temperatures in May, NOAA went on, uh, said, have been so dramatically different that they establish a new neighborhood apart from the historical year-to-date temperatures. In Colorado, at least seven major wildfires are burning at the time of this writing. The Waldo Canyon fire in Colorado Springs destroyed 347 homes and killed at least two people. The High Park fire farther north burned 259 homes and killed one. While officially, quote, contained now, that fire won't go out, according to Colorado's Office of Emergency Management, until in active nature, such as prolonged rain or snowfall. The derecho storm system is another example. Derecho is Spanish for straight ahead, and that is what the storm did, forming near Chicago and blasting east, leaving a trail of death, destruction, and downed power lines. Add drought to fire and violent thunderstorms, according to Dr. Jeff Masters, one of the few meteorologists who frequently makes a connection between extreme weather and climate change. Across the entire continental U.S., 72% of the land area was classified as being in dry or drought conditions last week. We're going to be seeing a lot more weather like this, a lot more impacts like we're seeing from this series of heat waves, fires, and storms. Fifth Masters warned, this is just the beginning. Fortunately, we might be seeing a lot more of Jeff Masters, too. He was a co-founder of the popular weather website, weatherunderground.com, in 1995. Just this week, he announced that the site had been purchased by the Weather Channel, perhaps the largest single purveyor of extreme weather reports. Masters promises the same focus on his blog, which he hopes will reach the much larger Weather Channel audience. He and others are needed to counter the drumbeat denial of the significance of human-induced climate change, of the sort delivered by CNN's charismatic weatherman, Rob Marciano. In 2007, a British judge was considering banning Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth, from the schools in England. After the report, Marciano said on CNN, Finally, finally, you know, the Oscars, they give out awards for fictional films as well. Global warming does not conclusively cause stronger hurricanes like we've seen. Masters responded to that characteristic clip by telling us on Democracy Now! Our TV meteorologists are missing a big opportunity here to educate and tell the population what is likely to happen. Beyond the borders of wealthy countries like the United States, in developing countries where most people in the world live, the impacts of climate change are much more deadly, from the growing desertification of Africa to the threats of rising sea levels and the submersion of small island nations. The U.S. news media have a critical role to play in educating the public about climate change. Imagine if just half the times that they flash extreme weather across our TV screens, they alternated with global warming. This Independence Day might be the beginning of a time when we when we begin to wean ourselves off of fossil fuels and pursue a sane course towards sustainable energy independence. And that's one of 
200 or so columns that are collected in this book. Um, it's published by a, a fine nonprofit publisher named Haymarket Books. Uh, it's from a union print shop. And it's in part because we had such a good team putting out the physical book uh, that we were able to stop the presses. Uh, Amy and I and some others went to uh, Basque Country in July. Uh, uh, she was invited to speak at a commemoration of the uh, bombing of the Basque town of Guernica, or Guernica um, 75 years ago. And it's kind of to be immersed in the history of the A-bomb here in Los Alamos, kind of the final big bombing of World War II, and to have been in July in Guernica, to have met survivors, to have seen the record, uh, and what, what happened, uh, what we learned, was kind of an interesting kind of book in 1937 to 1945. But the, the bombing of Guernica, as they call it in Basque Country, as most of you know, um, was conducted at the behest of the Spanish Nationalist Army, um, Franco, by the German Luftwaffe, and was in part practice. And what was interesting and what we saw was that while the residences, the, 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 open, the crowded market was destroyed, the, the businesses were destroyed, the rail line that ran, that bisected the the town was left intact. And on the other side, the more industrial side of town, and directly abutting the rail line, uh, so very close to the destruction, were three weapons plants. And uh, we asked our publisher to delay the, public, the printing of the book, even though it was already submitted and in the printer's uh, hands, uh, because we had, written, uh, we had written about the uh, preservation of the small arms manufacturing plant, and how interesting it was that you know, um, it wasn't just a mass aerial bombardment, it was very targeted. Uh, and small arms, the, the preservation of small arms production was critical to the strategy. Uh, while that, while we were writing about that, back near where I live in Aurora, Colorado, uh, a shooter went in and massacred a dozen people. And so we wrote about that and said, please uh, stop the presses. We're writing about the Aurora Massacre and we want to get that column in. And if you know how the books are prepared, you know, they're, the, all the pages are numbered, it's, everything's indexed, and you can't really mess with it too much. So uh, the publisher said, okay, we can squeeze it into the very end. And that's what they did. And then as that uh, was about to go to print, there was another massacre in uh, the Sick Temple in Wisconsin. <coughs> Uh, so they again delayed it so that we could add to the, the bad news that we had written about. And then finally, at the same time, the Obama administration essentially derailed a UN global treaty, the arms con an arms control treaty from the uh, outlining certain uh, transfers of small arms, uh, essentially making, uh, hoping to make it harder for uh, factions in distant places to obtain automatic weapons, uh, but that was because of the power of the gun lobby here in the United States. Uh, the Obama administration um, scuttled the, the UN Global Arms uh, Control Treaty that was being de deliberated at the time of those massacres. So we have kind of the bittersweet, uh, you know, a fine ability to include as much content as possible in the book. Uh, it delayed its release, and it's really just hitting the stores now. Uh, but uh, the final chapter in the book includes uh, our, our reflections and reports on those massacres and, and ends with uh, our column written after our trip to Guernica. So I encourage you to, uh, to get the book and, and join us afterwards upstairs at the Art Center. Um, I, I've worked with Amy Goodman for about 12 years. And I've learned a lot. It's inspiring. It's educational. She's a true journalist. A friend of hers could do a far, I think, far better job of introducing her. He contributed the foreword to the book. Um, and he describes a time they traveled together early in their careers. He had not yet released his first film uh, at the time that they traveled together. 
So this is a foreword written by Amy's friend, Michael Moore, and I'll just share a brief part of it 